this is a journey that we started about five weeks ago. And I'm happy that finally we are landing. <clears throat> Please forgive me for my voice that's a bit off. I've been struggling with the cold and uh, malaria for a couple of days now. So, but I'll do my best to be here as, as clearly as I can be so that you can all follow and enjoy, enjoy the conversation. Thank you very much. So for those who are just joining us, this is the DLI channel. DLI is for development, empowerment and leadership initiative. It's an NGO that has its vision on what transformation one man at a time, one community at a time. And like I said, the focus for today is a, is a, is a, is a program we started about five episodes ago, which makes it like five months ago, because this was about once a month. And what we have been focusing on is on the possibility of how you can build wealth on a nine to five. Again, for the benefit of those who are new here, just as a quick reminder, this is more than just a training. This product from the Hey Coach Stable is more about sharing experience, crowdsourcing knowledge, focusing on real life situations, and then using that to distill insights. And what we are trying to do is to ensure that as much as it is possible, you do not have to necessarily gamble with your decisions or take blind decisions simply because you need to wait to book time to spend time with your with your coach or your mentor. So what we've tried to do here is to create this platform where you could get coaching and mentoring on the go. And while I am on that on that zone, it will be necessary to just mention that um, we have a Telegram group which we intend to make a bit more active now by by throwing teasers there. Yeah? But the whole essence of that group was actually to afford anyone who needs voices, thoughts, opinions about decisions. Just go there and drop it and then see what others have to contribute to it. And where you do not even want to be the one dropping directly, you could drop with any of the any of the um, admins and they will certainly drop the question and then we'll get opinions and see what others have experienced around those things. So that is really the core of this product. But like I said, what we are talking about today is the last episode and my producer has said is the bottom is the bottom part, if you know what I mean, from this part of the world, of this particular program. We started about five months ago, focusing on how you could possibly build wealth, even if you are working a nine to five. How can you build wealth? Is it even possible? Is it realistic? Is it only for the entrepreneurs to build wealth? If you have missed any of the last four episodes, I invite and encourage you to please go back. We have a YouTube channel for DLI, Development, Empowerment and Leadership Initiative. All past episodes are there. If you go in and check them out, you will be able to see what we've shared so far. But by way of a quick recap, what we've tried to do every time on this program is to situate our, our, our focus around the story. And without any intention to bore those who have been here since we started, 
this episode story is more around Sam and Vanessa. Bottom line is Sam is on the nine to five, hungry for more, desirous, desirous of being more. On the other side of the divide, you have Vanessa, who seems to have it all together. And today she's in Cairo, tomorrow she's in China. Then it looks like, hey, am I missing out? Can I ever get to a point where I can build wealth and I can also live the kind of life that I would like to live? Uh, thank you, John. John has dropped the link to, to our YouTube channel on the group chat. You may on, on the chat, you may just want to check that out and pick it up. So back to the story. Sam is there then wondering, is it possible at all for me to build wealth? And that has been the core of our discourse over the last five months. So we've tried to make a distinction between being rich and being wealthy. You will find out when past recording. But when we talk about wealth, we are talking largely around a position of financial independence that is enduring, which comes as a result of the accumulation of assets and which on its own can generate funds and returns for the owner compared to where you have to keep going to work or when you are not working, you are not generating anything. Again, we did research and as probably expected, research confirmed that if you are more, if you are an entrepreneur, your road to wealth or your chances of building wealth is faster simply because of the velocity at which you can multiply. But research also clearly confirmed that as entrepreneurship is a faster road to wealth. It can also mean a faster road to, to, to bankruptcy, to poverty, to losing everything. And one thing that is common is that whether it is entrepreneurship or whether it is employment, the same principles apply. The only difference is the speed that one delivers compares to the other. And like you also know, everything has a plus and a minus. While the entrepreneurship track gives you a faster velocity, a faster acceleration, the risk is higher, the pressure is higher, the uncertainty can be draining. The downside of what you have in entrepreneurship can be the upside for the employment, which is what we have been focusing on. There is some measure of predictability to your income. If you have the right principle, that energy that you may not have for the risk and the uncertainty, you can channel that energy into mastering your wealth equation and getting on top of how you become wealthy, not to just be living from paycheck to paycheck. That being said, therefore, we then decided to explore the possibility, knowing fully well that Entrepreneurship is not for everybody. Some have tried it and they've lost, they've almost lost their mind. Some cannot even think of the pressure of today you are very, you are washed with revenue and income. The next day you are scratching your head and biting your nails and wondering where the next one is going to come from. It's a fact that entrepreneurship is not for everybody. So, whether entrepreneurship for you is for you, but you are still in a nine to five, or you have downright clear that entrepreneurship is not for you, meaning you see yourself traveling the nine to five track for a while. This episode or this particular topic has been about whichever road you are traveling on, how do you build wealth? And we focused on the money wealth equation because usually unless it is by inheritance and the truth of the matter is that 
Being wealthy is not just about having money in the bank. Being wealthy is about your mindset, it's about who you are, how you think, how you handle money, how you handle opportunities, your appetite for risk, all of that. But the truth of the matter is that wealth is not the first step. You first have to generate money before you can then find a way, if you know the principle, to convert it to equation, I mean, to wealth. If you find the money, you need to get the equation to convert it to wealth. And that is what then led us to this money wealth equation. And we've explored this topic around four buckets. One is how to make money. The second bucket was how to milk money. The third bucket was how to multiply money. And the last bucket was or is how to manage money. So we've gone through making money, milking money, multiplying money. I'd like to also use this opportunity to uh, thank uh, Financial Jennifer, who was our special guest last episode on multiplying money. It was a very interesting session. If you missed it, like I said, all the episodes are available in our YouTube channel. And if you go to that channel, you will see even other areas that we've covered in our five years now or something like that on this journey. So you say it's over 160 videos that we have there. And I'm sure you'll find one or two things relevant. So last week we had Financial Jennifer here and she went through investments, opportunities, multiplying your money from different perspectives. Very, very rich session. I, I encourage you to please watch. So today we are landing. Now we are landing by focusing on managing money. Managing money. And the whole essence is wealth is the result of accumulation of assets, accumulation of financial position, meaning that by the etymology of that word, it's something that accrues over time. It accumulates over time. So if you're able to make it, if you're able to milk it, if you're able to multiply it, but you do not know how to manage it, then it probably would just be at best a swing of boom and bust and bust and boom and boom and bust. But if you really want to be wealthy, if you are really thinking about wealth, then the way to go is to not just know how to apply money, but also how to manage money. Now, again, because this is the last episode, I'm just going to spend a minute each on each of this bucket so that it all builds up to this last one. In making money, we covered five stops money comes when you are able to solve problems and for you to be able to solve problems it is easier when your purpose is clear what is your why i think i stumbled on something i think this week that really um gave me an interesting perspective to something that i've been playing somewhere at the back of my mind when you think about successful entrepreneurs actually you'll find out that Nine out of ten times, this the the product or the service that pushes them to limelight, that starts as the source of their wealth or their success, is actually usually a problem that they had, something that was happening around them, something present in their life, a hurdle do they had to cross. But they then had the presence of mind and then they had the configuration to be able to then pivot that and then redefine that and then find the expression for that problem that they're able to scale. And when I heard that thing this week or last week, what came to my mind was this issue of Uber. 
how did Uber start? Two guys, kind of which country they were. They, 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 were mo they had their cars, but it's a new country. They, they, they didn't have their vehicles with them. They needed to go from one place to the other. Boom. And Uber was born. And go around, you find out that that's usually something common. As if, if you find people who are into all these, many of these NGOs. I think I was, I saw something recently about, I can't remember what the health condition it was right now. I think it was autism or something like that. You find out that this, this is not being moved by a parent or a family who saw the impact of that illness and they wanted to make the world a better place. There is this man now has been very prominent on channels of, over the last couple of years. He's been pushing the cause of the albi albino community because he himself. So, so you find out that nature has a way of packaging your problem and giving you as an opportunity to solve. And the scale on which you can solve that problem can actually determine whether you are wealthy or you are not. So I went, I've gone to all that detour to just focus on the fact that discovering purpose is so pivotal to everything in life because when the use of something is not clearly established the abuse is inevitable if you are then able to discover purpose you are in a position to then see what talent and gift that you have if you bond do that with the right mindset you are then able to solve problems, solve big problems, solve it at the scale that excites. But the good thing is, if it is tied to a purpose, it will be much more fun. Don't be deceived that there will be days where you wonder whether you are sane. There will be days when you question yourself, but it will be, it will be on the whole, a much easier journey. And this is not just about entrepreneurship. If you find purpose in employment, if you are working in a role in an organization that ties with your core, it will seem like you are having fun. Because they say if you find purpose, you will never work any other, you never work for a, 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 a single other day for the rest of your life. So this is the core of how you make money. It does not matter. Whether it is entrepreneurship, it matters very little whether it is the employment. The same principle apply. Locate purpose. Locate purpose. Develop your talent and your gift around it. Have the right mindset. How are you thinking about it? Are you blaming the world? Are you blaming your parents? Are you blaming the people around you? Are you taking life by the scruff of the neck and running with it? The bigger the problems you can solve, the bigger the scale on which you can solve those problems, the bigger your, your opportunity of building wealth, irrespective of whether it's employment or entrepreneurship. And as you get these first, first four boxes sorted, your job then will be to keep looking for opportunities to scale. How do you optimize it? You are serving a local government today. Can it be two? Can it be five? One outlet, can it be 10? Can it be 20? One country, can it be five? Can it be 10? Keep scaling, keep adding opportunities, keep optimizing your service, keep optimizing your skill. Technology now means that you do not, not even, even if you're in employment, you don't even need to work for just one employer. In fact, you can be in Nigeria and work for anybody across the world, depending on how exotic your skills are. So remember this making money is foundation. You can't build wealth until you have created a path to making money. Making money is about solving problems. It is easier to solve problems when your purpose are tied to your problem. And then have the right mindset. Keep optimizing your talent and gifts. Keep optimizing your opportunities. It's only a matter of time before money starts flowing in. But if you know enough about money, you will know that Money flowing in does not normally translate to wealth. And that is where it starts getting very tricky. As I was, as I as I as I turned this page, I just remember many footballers, many sports people who are now bankrupt, who are now living on on, on 
on food stamps who are now working as 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 waiters as chefs in different organizations that do not belong to them what happened what happened to the many years when they were making billions and millions of dollars what happened is because this milking money is a principle that is not, not very very well established for most people and again, it matters very little whether you are an entrepreneur or you are an employee. Even though our focus is more around the employee, these principles cut across. And that is the fact that, one, if you succeed in making money or when you succeed in making money. And remember that when we spoke about purpose, I think I mentioned that in passing anyway, it does not even have to be commercial only. There are people who have built wealth on social enterprise, waste, street kids, climate. It depends on how those things are, are, are presented. How do you flip it? How do you offer it? Okay? Because you can do good and do well at the same time. So, but either way or whichever way you succeed in getting money to come in, if you don't learn how to milk it, you are not likely going to end up in the wealth buster. If you, if you are not careful, you may end up in the bankrupt, in the broke buster. So how do you navigate it? The first principle for milking money is that you learn to live on a budget. It sounds so basic. It sounds so simple. It sounds so common sense. But like somebody has said, most of the things that we, can, that we get as common sense, even common sense is not common anymore. Live on a budget. Not random. You need to sit down. Unfortunately, we can't go through this. You need to sit down. Identify your needs, not your wants. If there was any time you need to live, we all need to live on a budget, particularly if you are living in Nigeria at this moment. It's this time. Live on a budget, needs, not wants. Make sure that whatever you are making, you are spending far less than that. If you are not making enough now, and you realize that your needs are way higher than what you are making right now, don't beat yourself up. It's a start. Realize that you now have an opportunity to go and see how to increase your income. Opportunities will come. Remember what I said about the first bucket? Look for problems that you can solve. Look for how to solve it on a big scale. Over time, you can inch your way to the point where the income will be higher than your expenditure. But remember, it's about needs, not wants. If you want to know the details, please go to our YouTube channel and watch that, that particular episode in detail. I will not be able to go deeper. But what is the benefit or the natural consequence of living on a budget? It then gives you the window from which you can save. Again, whether you're an entrepreneur, or you're an employee, the same principle applies. If you're an, if you're an entrepreneur, uh, money comes, money goes. And I, and I kid you not, I've seen this in real life. For over the last 25 years, I've been in, in corporate, corporate world. 25 years and counting. It's the same. You see people making a lot of money. If you don't know how to save, as it is coming, they're buying, buying brand new cars. As coming, they are flying business class, the entire family, they are going on vacation. As the money is coming, they are building this, they are building that, and they are not building to generate assets. We'll come to that in a bit. If you don't save, it is very, very, very difficult for you to be in a position to, to, to milk your money and make the most out of it. And of course, this is where, again, you notice in the first bucket, we spoke about your mind. The second bucket, we are talking about your mind. You need to develop the capacity for milking money, resisting impulsive purchases. 
learning the, the art and science of delayed gratification. It's not everything you have money to buy today that you should buy. If I know everything that looks like a need today that should be met, wait until it becomes absolutely un, unavoidable, absolutely necessary. Because if you are not building a cash position, which can only come from saving, then you don't have bullets. Savings are like bullets. You load them in your gun. And then when the right target comes, you are steady, you aim, you squeeze, and then you hit. Some you may miss, but nine out of 10 times you can hit. But if you are not having bullets, you keep seeing targets, you keep seeing opportunities, but you'll never be able to take them. So save, save, and how do you save? Live on a budget and then build capacity for that journey. I will soon stop to take feedback from you. And then how do you multiply your money? This was last week. You then do investment. There are different ways you can invest. Right now, technology makes it possible for you to even invest in companies that are not in Nigeria. You can invest in the US, you can invest in the UK, you can invest in some other countries right from here. If you miss that episode again, go to our YouTube channel, Development, Environment and Leadership Initiative and watch last week's episode. But investment will also come with risks. There is nothing that is straight line smooth sailing. So as you are learning to invest, you must learn how to manage the risk associated. Portfolio management, how do you decide to, what to invest in? How do you decide how much to put in it? Again, watch that episode, it's very elaborated. And then the third bucket, we are talking about your mind. Mind, 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 mind. Being wealthy is a mindset. Because if you don't have that mindset, the all you will see when it comes to investment is what can go wrong. What if the company collapses? What if I lose money? What, 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 what? And the fear can hold you bondage. It's the same for the business person. You have one shop today. You are always there. Everybody sees you. You see them every day. You are the one writing the check. You are the one taking all the decisions. And then you have the opportunity to expand. Then you realize that, hey, I cannot be in two places at the same time. And then you don't have that delegating power, allowing some people to make certain decisions. If you do not have that mindset, you want to be carrying your checkbook in your pocket. If you have the mala mentality, like I call it, no pun intended, if you look at the average, if you're familiar with the Nigerian system, you'll find houses where there's a need to have a gate man, and typically you have some of some, some of these um, other Nigerians hired in, in into those positions. And then whether for managing the money they make on a monthly basis or just to keep themselves busy and engaged. You see them open a small kiosk and they put the stuff there. But those kiosks never grew beyond that. They are there five years. They are there 10 years. You know why? Because the mentality is all I want is just my organ paid my money today. Let me stock it here. So I will not blow all the money. And as I sell, I eat. I sell, I eat. I make the next salary. I restock. And when it's going to stock, what restock, what does it do? It locks up the place and takes the key away. Everybody waits until Musa gets back. Why? How can it grow? So if you also carry that mindset, plus all your education, plus all your university degree, plus all your, plus your many years of working, how does it grow? Which therefore means that developing this mindset is not optional. If you do not want to lose any money, you cannot make money. The question is to ensure that one, you don't lose money when it's avoidable, and two, to ensure that whatever money you lose is from calculated risk and it is so minimal that it doesn't undermine your position or your investment, that's it. But show me one person who's been wealthy, sorry, who is wealthy, who is rich, who's been through this journey and who has not lost money. I will tell you that person is not telling you the complete story. You lose money. 
So mindset, mindset, mindset. You know, for those of you who are close to me, I'm very heavy about the mind. That's your, that's your control center. Being wealthy is a mindset, all right? And that is what has now brought us to this week where we are now focusing on managing money, which will then lead you to converting it. At this point now, you are getting closer to the wealth bus stop. And how do you then make sure that you continue to grow it? So what I've tried to do over the last 30 minutes thereabout, that's a nice one, is just to run through this episode so far, like a summary. I'd like to pause. I do not know if there is anybody who wants to chime in anything. Have you experienced anything since we started this five months ago? Anybody here started any investment, consolidated any investment, started a budget, started to save? What has your experience been? Please unmute and try and keep it to two minutes and let's hear what you have to say. Anybody, you have anything to share? The floor is open. Anybody? Any experience to share? We've been at this now for five months. How has it been? Have you started living on a budget? Have you started saving? Hello, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear you, Uncle John. Um, Good evening. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Someone Hello. wants to speak. Go on. Well, somebody is talking. I didn't hear that. Yeah, yeah somebody was saying hello. Okay, uh, John, you go. Ibuku has raised his hand, but John, go ahead uh, after you take Ibuku. Okay. So, I mean, so I mean, by and large, I've always been doing budgeting, but uh, what I what, what happened is this made me be more very serious about budgeting, especially with some side project that I run, because sometimes I run side project and they are not well, you know, budgeted. I mean, I've always been well, how do they call it? The shaman that does not know budgeting. You the shaman <laughs> has budget has budgeting in his subconsciousness, so to say. So uh, that's the right way to put it sometimes. I agree. So but but when it comes to sometimes when I run some project, I notice I don't really put it on paper, so to say, until everything is over, so to say. It's not that I'm frivolous about it. I'm not someone that... But then, mapping it out, budgeting it, like you say, like you mentioned in one of our sessions, at the beginning, sometimes it's very good. Everything makes profit on paper until yeah. everything gets running. So, which has really helped me, really. I mean, change my mindset with some project so to say thank you so, very much for sharing john i became please go ahead you know what how you doing fine sir so um one of one thing i've asked for this session one of the things i've learned before i'm always i'm always doing short term um, i will buy now <laughs> before i know in two three days I'll go and whatever it is, something will just take the money away and I would not be committed to it. So after listening to Financial Journey and through the series, I've learned now, I've, I just kept a money somewhere in one of those apps and just kept it for six months. So my reward period is in February. So once it's in February, I will just reward myself and um, go to, sorry, I'll just go to one of these spots um, eight pound a jam and that's reward for nice the one, for like nice one. Time. Just make sure you invite me. You cannot eat pound a jam alone. It's not nice, but I, I, <laughs> I like that. I really, I really do like, like that. I, and you should be glad to celebrate the little little steps. Like I said, it's a journey. It's a, it's a mind. There's a word has been coming to my head over the last week. So tuning your mind. You know, I, 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 I tell you, I see your hand. Thank you for joining. I'll be with you in a minute. I, I'm, into, I, I'm into music. I play classical music and direct classical music. Before I start to play, every instrument has to tune. And the one that is more 
obvious about this tuning it has to do with the string instrument, the violin, the viola, the cello, the, the double bass. If you don't tune each string properly, you cannot have a good production. It's the same way the mind is. It requires tuning. And how do you tune the string? You turn the peg, you pluck the string, you compare it to the master instrument. Those who have ears for it, particularly have a digital tuner, it tunes to the very small degree. If you don't work on your mind to get to the point where you realize that, look, it's a journey. That pounded yam story is very nice. And then the next one, if you build it enough, it can be the next one. I'm going to reward myself by buying myself a car, a bag, a wristwatch, a tree. But you earn it first, and then you celebrate and enjoy yourself. I, I love it, but you owe me pounded yam. That's what it means, I think. So I'll be waiting. Okay, Tayo. Okay, at the top. You have the floor, sir. Good to have you here. What's up? Fine, sir. Good evening, everyone. Okay, so um, mine was more around the um, wealth multiplication. Um, so, some after the second, uh, I think the second or the or the third session, uh, I started to start looking at um, smaller businesses, but not not consciously anyway, because I wasn't looking. But one came around and he needed loan, so I was trying to understand what he does and to see if there is a prospect in it. But after some time with the young man, I saw a very big prospect in it, and I kind of explained to him why it could make much sense if we partner together. Um, I would fund in some places, and then the balance sheet is, is still bringing us, like the profit and everything. Um, so it's about two months now, and I can say it's, it's, been, it's been a very good one because at the end of every month, Aside the monthly salaries, there is about 40% of my salary coming again from a different source. Um, the capital is safe, kind of, because the business is something I well understand. It's about diapers and waste, and we realize that it's a business that just can't, can't die immediately. So, yeah, I that was know. one of the benefits I got from this lesson. I am I'm super excited about it. And these opportunities are everywhere. But, boss... You were only able to do that because you had some liquid change to put into it, correct? That's very correct. So when we speak about these things, and I, I am not being boastful here or anything, most of the content that you get on this channel, they are original content. They are proven. They are researched. They are validated. This is not the session where... We come and then because we've gone to YouTube or gone to chat GPT. No, these are things that have been proven by the grace of God yours sincerely for almost three decades. I say it again, your saving is like you are getting bullets. And they say you keep your bullets dry. You keep it. You don't just shoot, 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 shoot. You just keep keeping it. Very, and as you are now in this, there are so many businesses like this that in five years' time, they will be multi-billion. Let me warn you, like he said something in passing. He didn't focus on it. I was celebrating more on the return. But there is a due diligence that goes. He said he looked at it, tried to understand. If I even heard him well, the opportunities he saw probably was not what the guy even brought, but it's close to it. But the more he looked, his own trained mind, his own experienced mind was able to say, wait a minute, this plus, this plus, this can never be equal to zero. If you can do it well, there will not be something left at the end of the day. And today, two months, we don't know how far that is going to go. And if you need help, you that is why this Hey Coach, is, hey Coach platform is there. And that's something like us exist. You can always ask, reach out. One of the things you will find in this week's episode is humility. You can rare, rarely do you find anybody who succeeds as a solo player. Rarely. It takes a team to make this work. So if you are greedy and you think, oh, it's all about me, don't let anybody see it. That greed may be the reason why you can't, you won't see that will put you in trouble. 
But if you are not sure and it looks interesting, having somebody else come in who can give you sound advice and give you supervision and give you management and you give the person a, a, a fraction of your journey is a better thing to do because 100% of zero is always zero. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you turn the zero upside down, lie, <laughs> lie it on the side, <laughs> put it on top of the hill. 100% of zero is always zero. But if you come together with people, again, it's another conversation for another day. If you want us to talk about it, go to the group chat and drop your, your topic of interest. Because partnership is also very tricky. It's a slippery ground. But there are tr tricks around it that can save you. But if you find the people you are working together, 80% of something, 90% of something of that now becomes $2 billion, $7 billion, $100 billion. Having 70% of it and sharing the remaining 30% with others to help you make it $10 billion. It is a better position to be than for you to think, ah, this thing can become $100 billion. Let me try and do it myself. But you are never able to bring it to life. So, these sessions are not just something to come and mark your Saturday evening once a month. They can make a difference. And if that takes whatever comes from there, keeps his bullet dry, and other opportunities come. If you remember one of our episodes, we spoke about uh, building assets, creating assets. It keeps it dry. Another opportunity comes. It puts it into it. Another 40% comes. It's still there doing this 9 to 5. He can learn a poor people like us. We help him to manage his portfolio. He's still there. He doesn't have to worry about anything. The thing just comes. This is what we are saying when we say that from your nine to five, you can become wealthy. Particularly if you do not have appetite for entrepreneurship right now, or you do not even think entrepreneurship is ever for you. Thank you very much. I am excited about this testimony. Any other person, the floor is still open. Um, our model for today is very, very short and straightforward. So anybody else, what has this, what has the journey been for you over the last five months? How has this affected you anymore? For those who've been here since we started, how have you used this? Any testimonials to give? Okay, so. Let's then move and try to land in about 15 minutes. Now that you have learned how to make money, now that you have learned how to milk money, now that you have learned how to multiply money, it means that you are a few bus stops to the wealth bus stop. Question, when it comes, how do you manage money? How do you manage wealth? The first thing is about humility. One of the traps that humankind have to learn how to deal with is wealth, money. Money is very powerful. Not even in this our society where money is now worshipped. If you do not build humility into your kids, becoming rich, becoming wealthy, can become the banana peel that can destroy everything that you have built. You have to learn to be humble. Humility is what will make you learn how to work with other people. Humility is what will help you to treat your staff properly. Humility is what will help you to respect those who are ahead of you. Because money is just a store. What did the most call it recently? He said money is a... He call it a... a, a Anybody, did anybody see that thing recently when Elon Musk was saying that wealth is only, is it a store? Is it, is it a record of your position or, 
or a store, a record of, I can't, I'll look for it. But the, the, the impression is that money on its own is useless. Money is just a reflection of something else. So if you don't realize that money can come and go, the relationships that you have are more vital. I've known people who have gone bankrupt, but their network is what refloated them. There was a time, I can't remember many years ago, when was it David Doe that was playing pranks as to, he went on social media and said, you need to clear a very poor and he needs money from his friends. And all of them were sending it. The question is, are you humble enough to even have that kind of network? Can you call and your people will, will they answer? Because pride will destroy everything. You will talk to people you shouldn't talk to because you think you have some change in your pocket. And then it's like twine. You start cutting the, the strand one by one, one by one, one by one, until one day the thing will just go boom and then you'll be surprised what happens. So managing money comes from being humble. Being humble to know the things that you know. Being humble to know the things you do not know. Being humble to know that in this space, I need to find somebody who's going to guide me. In this space, I am very unfamiliar. Humility. Knowing that, no, because I succeeded in this business, doesn't mean I was succeeded in all the businesses. So it's a state of mind. It helps you with your investment decisions. It helps you with your people decisions. It helps you with your relationship decisions. If you do not add humility to your kit, if you do not add humility to your game, no matter how close you get to the wealth bus stop, even if you succeed in arriving at the wealth bus stop, it will be very difficult for you to consolidate and grow without humility. So as you become rich, don't let it get into your head. Don't let it get, don't let it lead to this overinflated ego. Money is just a reflection of something. It is not the thing in itself. One. The second thing when it comes to managing money is giving. Some people want to be like the dad. Everything, not, not, nothing must go out. It wasn't designed that way. It wasn't designed that way. If you want your money to go, grow, you must find opportunities to give. The way the world is designed, it is designed to be mutually reinforcing for you to, for you to maintain what we call homeostasis in psychology. To maintain the balance, that's why you have all these issues about global warming. There must be a relationship between the savannah, the waterways, um, how much of uh, fossil fuel is born. And what is input for one is output for another. The, 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 the creator of heaven and earth has been so intentional to create that chain and that loop. If you don't learn to give, what you are doing is that the things that you should have given that you are not giving, they may end up become the canker worm that will eat up what you have. There are people that you need to support. You need to look around. And even if you take away the religious or the spiritual aspect, the reality is that if the poor cannot sleep because they are hungry, many times the rich will not be able to sleep because the poor are awake. The rich is not unable to sleep because he's, he or she is hungry. No. The rich will not be able to sleep because the poor man is awake and is making so much noise and is, and is so unruly. And that is the, you don't need to look far before you see what is going on in our country. And I read something somewhere that may we not get to the point where the only thing available for the poor to eat is the rich. I used to have a resort that I love going to. The name of that resort is Whispering Palms. Anybody here been there before? Whispering Palms, somewhere on the way to Badai, Akodo. Anybody? 
Okay, Taya has been there, yes, I remember. Who else? Okay, John has also been there, yes. Who else? That place, very, 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 I've been going to that place since 2000. 2000. But, I have never heard one single robbery incident whether and sometimes I'm on that road, 11 p.m. And for those who've been there, you know that place can be extremely deserted. Whether it is 11, whether it is 12, whether it is 1. I have never heard of one single attack or any attack on the premises. And I've been very concerned. I mean, my line of interest, even though I'm an accountant, has always been around organizational culture, building sustainable systems and stuff like that. And as I started studying that business, God bless the soul of Professor, I can't write his name now. He's late now with his wife. And I noticed that that business existed for the community. I think the man was from that side. That business existed for that community. The food that is that is cooked there, it became an, um, a, 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 a source of outlet for the farmers in that community. All the people that work there that are from that community, from the cleaner to the chef, to this, to that, to that, to that, to that. He built it in such a manner that it became a community business such that they knew that their own wealth or their own survival is directly tied to the survival of that organization. And so they did not need any military position or any police station or any armored tank to come and try and protect them. And this is a place that's overlooking the water. So you could have pirates coming in. You just realize that they knew that their destinies was, the man made sure that their destinies was tied together. And that is exactly the part of the common sense thinking of giving. If you do not give, it is very difficult for you to get. It is very difficult for you to multiply. So you want to manage money. You need to be humble. You must learn to give. And lastly, like I've always said, it's always about the mind. You need to now keep expanding your mind. You need to keep expanding the base that you have. Bring people close to you. Realize that in running after wealth, you will lose some, you will, you will win some. It cannot be just about being 100% sure, 100% sure, 100% sure. The only thing that's 100% sure is death. There is nobody that can give you any certainty around any business. And because you've taken one decision that didn't necessarily go the way you wanted it to go, does not mean that you can, you should not try the next one and then the next one and then the next one until you keep expanding. So wealth management is more around the mind. Is around the mind. How are you managing your mind? Now that you are close to the bus stop or you are there, are you humble? Are you thinking right? Are you still looking for opportunities? Because if you don't add to it, it is going to eventually become empty. So you need to keep expanding your capacity, building your mind, expanding your network, expanding your assets. Don't shy away from taking decisions. And remember that what you have is not just for you. You are not the most brilliant. You are not the most sophisticated. You are not the one that's, that's most disciplined with budget. Not everybody will get to that level that you are. But whichever level you are, there are people that can benefit from your benevolence. There are people that can benefit from your giving. And then through, the, through those giving, you attract the goodwill you attract their 
the you 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 influence the universe because that is how it is created. It's a cycle. So when you inject positive things into the universe, forget about God, forget about religion, not the principles on which the world is founded. You have triggered something that is certainly going to come back to you, whether you are a Christian or not. It doesn't change anything. It's just the universal law. So when you give, you trigger your opportunity to get. It may not come in forms of cash. It may come in forms of opportunities, in forms of goodwill, in forms of network, in forms of references, but it's never lost. And then as you build your capacity and you run it properly and you get better, you know the things you are good at, you focus on it, you know the things you are not so good at to delegate, you are humble to ask for help where you need, you are humble to, to, to respect people, whether they are small or great, you are giving yourself the opportunity to really become wealthy and then to grow to that point where even when you are not at work, your money continue to work for you. So when we talk about wealth, we are saying, how do you get to that point where your money starts to work for you? Where you don't you won't stop working because there's something therapeutic about work. Work has to do with your <laughs> with the wellness of our mind. But you will not be working simply because I have to pay school fees. You will not be working simply because I need to put fuel in the car. You'll be working because you really enjoy what you're doing and you are making a difference and you are creating value. Of course, you will earn, but you would have solved the bill problem. You have solved the expense problem. That is when you are arriving at the point of wealth. You don't have to become Bill Gates or become an Nico Dan Gute before you are wealthy. You just need to be at the point where you have enough financial position that one can generate money on its own, whether you are there or not. Two, can be enduring. All right. And three, you do not have to worry about, like I, like I read somewhere, we need to get to the point where the expensive becomes very cheap. That is the goal. Where you are no longer, it, it's not a big deal. You don't have been ostentatious or being wasteful. But we get to the point where the expensive becomes rich. Your, your headache is not about the price tag. Your headache is, is it a need? Do I need it? Then once the answer is yes, is bring it, whether it's a jet or an island or whatever. So we don't have to become dangote. It depends on the level of which we are living. But the point is, it's enduring, it's generating, it can regenerate itself, and you do not have to struggle for it before you can you can you can you can pay your bills. Okay, so the meaning therefore is that learn to build capacity, capacity to solve problems, capacity to manage the success that is going to come. So as you walk away from this session, we've tried to go around and land. The question is still back to that capacity matter. What problems are you, are, are you able to solve? And then how much of wealth mindset do you have knowing that it's about living on a budget it's about being able to save it's about being able to invest it's about the discipline of managing it when it comes all of this to get better about the capacity that you have so i sincerely hope that this session has been useful and impactful for you and if it has been, then the floor is open for you to let's have your final word here before we bring this episode to an end and we look forward to something else to, to focus on. And like I said earlier, if there's any area of interest, something you'd like us to cover, we are really all about the audience. It's about how do we make a difference? 
So if there's something you'd like us to cover, please join us on our WhatsApp group. It's um John, please, JT, if you don't mind, just drop that link here. And just drop your topic of interest. Can you cover this? Can you cover that? And even if you don't have the topic right now, if it occurs to you at another point, please just come in and drop it there because we are keen to make a difference to you operationally. This is not a training. This is a knowledge sharing, crowdsourcing session such that we can deal with real life issues that helps our members to become more successful at whatever they do. So thank you very much for being with us over these last five months and for those who've been with us for longer. The floor is open now for your final comments. Open mic session. Anything you want to chime about, please go ahead and say, and then we will be wrapping up in a few minutes. The floor is open. Okay, John has joined. John has dropped the Hey Coach link. If you are not there, just click on it and click on it and join us. And if you have any question, you can drop it there. If you do not want to drop it directly, just go to any of the administrators' box and just drop it there, and then we'll bring it in and and see what we can learn from one another. Yes, any comments before we before we close? Okay, this? thank you, thank you so far, Oga. Thank you for your time. Thank you for last month, which was very much eye-opening. For those of us that do not know much about, well, not that know much, we don't know the new. So what I did not mention the last time is there are other new technologies that have come up to be able to do basic you know, investment. And that was very much touched in the last uh, month's tough, uh, edition. And I hope I'll be able to you, you know, use it in the future, so to say. The other one is uh, if you can deal with partnership as much as possible. So like you said, in our climate, or maybe to those of us that come from that climate, to and as, you know, we still have that mind that, I mean, uh, there is a proverb that even money destroy friendships, so to say. Yeah. So, but then, um, which sometimes, I must be frank, Maybe because of when I was in school, I did a little, you know, out of school, just little, little, not much. And some of, not everybody, I did not have a bad experience all the time, but I've had some close. So what I wanted is, because you already mentioned it, okay, where you were mentioning, I was thinking, she won't have a contract from the beginning. Like I'm speaking with a friend, we are trying to have an idea already, we are building it, uh, we wanted to Get a solution. I would have loved to ask that Gary. At what point did uh, Mr. Tayo decided to have a contract or have a written, written agreement, so to say, before they move forward? Maybe something around that. Maybe that will help some of us that do yes. that do both of those words. Both is both that, words. Is Tayo still here? I is think so. He will let me see. He will yes. let me know what he did. Yes, I'm, I'm still here. Ogati, yes. How, how, have you, how have you navigated that theory? Okay, so um, for me, so um, like I said, the first um, the first time we met was like an urgent need. So um, after we discussed for about three hours, I gave the first tranche I needed immediately. But um, we had another meeting where we now plan on, okay, how do we move this together going forward? After we agreed on our on our uh, stakes and everything, I actually put forward an agreement shared with him to review. Uh, we came back with some with some concerns, which is normal anyway. We agreed on those concerns and we reached a compromise and the both parties signed. Um, interestingly, he, uh, the person uh, we have like a mutual friend, like somebody that is mutual that we, we both know. So we just kept the person as a witness or a third party signing on, on that end. But at the moment, we've not gone anything legal. Um, but yeah, it just... Yeah, the agreement is also legal. The but that, I, I, get, I know what you're saying. Yeah, that, that's very nice. But just, just to put it in context, did you know this person before this business relationship? Yes, yes. So um, I've known this person for about 
three years now, um, right. before before this relationship. Thank you, Tayo. Very much appreciated. Any other comments? Anybody with any experience that wants to share? Have you had any experience about things like this? I mean, on things in things like this, even if it is not recent. And, and what's your experience? Okay. Um, let's not. I won't go too deep today. If there is enough demand for this topic, then we can take it up next month. But the truth of the matter um, is that when it comes to partnership, no agreement can save you. None. So agreements are good. Agreements are necessary. But the more fundamental thing in doing business is to see how you can find people where your values align where your beliefs align. If, as an example, somebody believes that in partnership, your partner does not really want you to be there when the business succeeds. Either if somebody comes to that to a partnership, that kind of mindset, or more, it doesn't matter the amount of money, carry your car and just run. Because it means that as soon as that business begins to succeed, if somebody is thinking that you are thinking to kill him, or ha, ha, I don't need to say anything again. So if somebody believes that um, there is nothing you cannot do to make money, and so when they are executing contracts on behalf of the company, even though the profit is supposed to come, even, the, even though the company is supposed to make profit from that deal, they are also trying to make individual profit then you already know that that company can be sold right under your nose without you knowing about it. And that is why I asked the question about how much, how, how long uh, Mr. Detail has known this or that guy. Because these are things you don't pick up in a hurry. You don't pick it up in a flash. It's only time that proves it. And it is in small, 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 small things that you look out for things like this. So when it comes to partnership, the key is to find somebody that your mind, your, your mind aligns, common values, similar values, similar principles, what that low. Somebody is very greedy and is very grabby. Just know that you are in trouble. And to, to get to that point is a small thing that Mr. Tyre just said, which is if you see and it looks like it from a distance, you don't necessarily have to go to fit in. The Yoruba man will say that you don't put the two feet inside the, the river at the same time. You put one feet, one foot, and see how deep it is and how firm the ground is, and then another foot until you know whether it can support your weight. So, even though it took like a, a month or two for him, but the principle is still the same. Depending on how big the scale is, you need to try and just allow the thing to have a life of it. So don't rush into it. And in my journey, I have had the privilege of midwifing a number of international investments. There is a reason why companies that do international investment go through what they call due diligence. Due diligence is not just about the paperwork, accounting, legal. It is also because for, for serious organizations, it doesn't matter how quickly you can get the paperwork done. They are never in a hurry. They want to give it six months. They want to give it nine months. They want to give it 12 months. Why? They want to see a whole like a whole cycle play out. They want to see the dynamics between the people that say they are running the business. They want to see the dynamics between them and the investor. They want to be sure that, humanly speaking, they take care of the obvious red flags. Nobody can see. It's like marriage. Until you enter it, you cannot know what is inside. But at least... Whatever you can see from the distance, how does he treat his brother? How does he treat his mother? How does he treat his in-laws? How does what are the staff saying? They want to allow it to play out. So when they now see, they can be, they can they can decide whether this looks like what they can live with or not. But like I said, it's a big kettle of fish on its own. If the team wants us to go in that direction, then jump on that group chat and let's see, let's do some sampling and see where the team wants us to go and if that is the direction then we'll, we can dive a bit deeper and thrash it out but thank you very much for sharing that um 
John. John. Any other comment from anybody? Ten past seven already. Any other comment from anybody? Okay, so it's been a very, very interesting five months. I must I must confess, and I'm really glad that um, in a little way, like I said, it's world transformation, one man at a time, one community at a time. So two people, three people, five people are able to take things away and, um, and make something out of it. Our objective is met. And as you continue the travel, feel free to uh, share our reference with other people. Let them know what we're trying to do. And hopefully this little thing you started will also grow very big. Amen. And when it grows very big, you will also be able to reference our product that, oh, okay, yeah, this was also birthed by virtue of this and this and this. And it will have been worth all the effort that it takes to make this happen. I shouldn't be running this program today. I've been ill since Monday. I don't know if you are still picking in my voice, but for me, it just doesn't make sense to say I'm going to postpone it for any reason. So it takes a lot to get this to happen, but we are glad if we're able to help just one person to move just one inch. It's 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 a it's it's something that gives us a lot of joy, and we hope that next month, whatever the topic we choose to decide uh, to choose to focus on, you will not only come but you will tell others that we are here and that we could contribute something to their journey and make their journey easier and make it more impactful. So on behalf of John and Ope and Dima and Bumi and all the people that are behind this, just push it along, I'd like to say a big thank you to all of you. And um, we have one final thing to request from you. Um, we normally would do a survey. So, John, yes, thank you. So, you have the survey here. Nothing, it's just a three question survey. It takes less than one minute to come. Just let's have your feedback so we have an idea of how to make this better. And until I see you next month, by the grace of God, thank you very much. Take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye, everybody.